Okay, in this video, I want to talk to you about something called mind control using remote neural monitoring. I want to show you this pattern and kind of go over the details of this pattern because it actually proves that remote neural monitoring is real. The focal point of this video is to, in fact, show how uh, one is mind controlled using these technologies and using a very specific protocol. Based on research and development, it has been discovered and concluded that there are various functions in the body that operate on an extremely low frequency level. You can see here on the screen, uh, the heartbeat rhythm is at one hertz. You can see things like phantom touch at 20 hertz. All of these are registered on the low frequency level uh, using, for example, one hertz, so on and so forth. But it has been shown now and demonstrated that most of these frequencies, these low level frequencies can be duplicated by a computer if the signals are demodulated to be picked up and received by the brain and the central nervous system. Remote neural monitoring essentially uses a computer based technology that transmits frequencies. And that is what this particular diagram is showing. It's showing the fact that there are computer-based programs or computer-based systems that are able to demodulate signal where it can be received or picked up by the brain. If you'll further notice this graph on the screen here, there's a four-part process uh, that targeted individuals go through. One includes satellite tracking. They're able through remote neuromonitoring to track your whereabouts all times of the day, anywhere you go and then it relays your GPS coordinates to a satellite, to a central command center. And then from that central command center, the, a supercomputer will send either messages or the targeting back to the individual. And that targeting can be anything from directed energy to messages, you'll hear voices, uh, you'll, you'll feel a a heating burning sensation through the microwave fields. Here you'll notice some burn markings on my leg as a result of what I believe was directed energy burns, uh, microwave burns on the leg. You'll notice the scarring that resulted from the directed energy. I have measured that and I wanna show you the measurements later on in the video. I wanna go over this uh, patent here that basically points out the technology for remote neural monitoring. Those of us that are targeted individuals, many of us have what's called remote neural monitoring, which is a remote system set up to monitor brainwave functions and also alter brainwave functions. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the technology here in the beginning and I'm just going to kind of briefly gloss over this uh, patent. So you'll notice this patent was filed in on August the 5th, 1974. One thing I want to point out here is Projects MK Ultra, the CIA's program of research and behavior modification, had a joint hearing, a selected committee on intelligence and a subcommittee on health and scientific research. And this, in essence, was designed to end the MK Ultra program in 1977. You'll notice that this patent came out one year before uh, this subcommittee hearing. If you'll notice here in the top left, it was actually fully developed and recorded April 20th, 1976. The abstract says here that this is an apparatus and method of sensing brain waves at a position remote from a subject, whereby electromagnetic signals of different frequencies are simultaneously transferred to the brain of the subject in which the signals interfere with one another to yield a waveform which is modulated by the subject's brain wave. Now, I know that sounds really complicated, but I'm going to show you a diagram here in a minute on how that how that actually works. It says the interference waveform, which is represented a representative of the brain wave activity is retransmitted by the brain to a receiver where it is demodulated and amplified. And then the circle portion here, it says the demodulated waveform is then displayed for visual 
viewing and routed to a computer for further processing and analysis. The demodulated waveform also can be used to produce a compensating signal, which is transmitted back to the brain to affect a desired change in electrical activity therein. In other words, within the brain. In other words, they're able to both modulate and demodulate signals or frequencies from a remote location, an actual computer, and those signals can actually be demodulated and they can actually change the electric activity within the brain, electromagnetic signals within the brain. Now here's a diagram that sort of goes over that, that theory that I just read. If you'll notice down here at the bottom right, you can see here the TI subject. This is the TI subject down here, illustrated by number eight. If you'll notice the signals that come into the brain here, numbers 41, 43, and 45. These signals all come from, two of them are incoming, one is outgoing, number 45 is outgoing. All right, so I wanna look at number 41 first. Uh, if you'll notice 41, it starts up here at the demodulated portion section here, okay? And it initially comes from, if you'll notice, it comes from the computer here, and then it's demodulated, then it goes through a series of amplifications, mixing, uh, then it's sort of uh, routed through an RF power divider, and then it goes through what's called a frequency doubler, and, and that's mixed, and then it actually goes into the brain. All of this is for the purpose of taking frequencies, a number of different frequencies, as it said in this uh, abstract here, where you can take a series of frequencies. You'll notice here it says different frequencies are simultaneously transmitted to the brain of the subject. Okay, that's what we're looking at here. So these different frequencies actually come through this process here. They're translated and they're sort of, they're sort of dubbed together, if I could use that word, whereby uh, they are received by the brain and modulated in, within the brain throughout the body and they create a, a series of different effects. Now for most targeted individuals, there are many, many, many different symptoms that we all kind of deal with. And it seems like many of us are different and it's for obvious reasons. Um, plausible deniability is one of the main things that the perpetrators try to keep uh, in the forefront. In other words, they don't want anyone to see a pattern of harassments between individuals. So they try to make everyone's harassment patterns different. And that's all done via computer. It's all done via frequencies. And that is what I want to show you here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy uh, this particular diagram and copy this diagram. And then what I want to do is I want to go down and show you the object of this invention. It says, and I'm right here on the... Uh, on the left side of the screen here. Uh, it says, it is therefore an object of the invention to remotely monitor electro ac electrical activities of the entire brain or selected local regions thereof with a single measurement. Another object is the monitoring of the subject's brain wave activities through transmission and reception of electromagnetic waves. Still another object, is to monitor brainwave activities from a position remote from the subject. A further object is to provide a method and apparatus for affecting brainwave activity by transmitting electromagnetic signals thereto. So you, you'll notice here, and this is kind of the key point here that I wanna kind of hone in on because this is, this is what a lot of targeted individuals deal with in their targeting under the category of electronic harassment. 
uh, electronic harassment takes in a number of different facets of targeting and harassment. For many of us, it, it starts with remote neuromonitoring because it would be very difficult to effectively control someone's mind if you couldn't monitor their mind in the first place. So they have computer systems set up where they can actually read the effects from the brain wave transmission. They can read the effects of the, of the harassment, whether it's uh, mild or intensive, and they can sort of govern it that way. Uh, this is very, very long, and a, and a lot of it is very intense technological information or details, all right? But I do want to go through a portion that I think is very significant for targeted individuals, and it starts here in number 60, right here at the left, left side of the screen here, number 50, actually. It says the computer, now I'm going to drop the diagram here. I might have to manipulate it. I don't know if I'll be able to, you'll be able to see it correctly, but I'm going to try to drop the diagram here to show you. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work or not. So we'll put it right there for now. It says the computer processes of the amplification brainwave 60 signal to derive information suitable for viewing by suppressing, compressing, or expanding elements thereof or combining them with other in information bearing signals and present that information on a display. Now, if you'll notice here on this diagram, I'm going to put it here just so you can see it. Number 60, uh, this is number 60 right in here. That's the computer source. The signals come from that computer source. They go through a series of demodulations and mixing and then finally they're transferred to sort of an rf field rf frequency or rf field where they are then dubbed together these frequencies are dubbed together and they're introduced as incoming signals to the targeted individual's brain okay and you know i'm going to show you sort of a a uh, diagram of how that works here in, in a little while. Let me go back here to the patent here. It says the display can be conventional ones such as the types hereby mentioned in employing electric electronic visual display or mechanical plotters. The computer can also be a conventional type, either analog or digital or a hybrid. A process of the entire brainwave emission patterns may be monitored or selected areas of the brain may be observed in a sim single measurement simply by altering the scan ang angle and direction of the antennas. There is no physical contact between the subject and the monitoring apparatus. The computer also can determine a compensating waveform for transmission to the brain to alter the natural brain waves in a desired fashion. All right, skipping over here to this portion here that I wrote, very important. It says modulations of the interference signal transmitted by the brain may be of amplitude, frequency, and or phase. Appropriate demodulators may be used to decipher subject brain's activity, select components of his brain wave may be analyzed by a computer to determine his mental state and monitor his thought processes. All right, so you can see here, and, and this is kind of the reason why I wanted to go to this point, was because of this, this, this particular area here that tells us that a person's brain waves can be monitored both while they're sleeping as well as while they're awake for the purpose of monitoring thought processes, also for monitoring any activity that the brain wave registers from the body. It could be when you're walking, when you're, when you're eating, it could be 
anything you're doing with your extremities, whether it's your right arm or your left arm, your brain registers all of that through the central nervous system. Well, that information is sort of modulated and demodulated, and it's picked up by a, a remote computer where it in turn reads out that communication, which allows them to monitor everything you're doing. And they can in fact send back frequencies to essentially, you know, if they, if, if, if they choose to harass in a certain area of the body, they can do that. If they choose to send voices or send any type of noise or any type of sound frequency, it can be picked up by the brain and it can actually register. In the next paragraph, it reads, as will be appreciated by those familiar with the art, apparatus, and method of the subject invention has numerous usages. Persons in critical positions, such as drivers and pilots, can be continuously monitored with provisions for activation of an emergency device in the event of human failure. Now keep in mind, this invention was created 1976. We've never heard anything about this invention from 76 until now. At least I haven't. But yet and still, the invention was created in 1976. And ironically, it was created and patented one year before what they made us, wanted us to believe was the end of the MKUltra program.